Hey guys, so welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well. So I know I've been filming quite a few minimal makeup routines for you recently, but I don't know, it's just what I'm really, really into right now. I feel like the more we get into summer, the less I want to put on my face uh, makeup wise. So this was bound to happen eventually, but I've literally just stopped wearing foundation um, and base products. So I thought, haven't ever done one of these before, but I wanted to show you guys my no foundation routine. I don't think you have to have perfect skin at all to do uh, a no foundation routine. I personally don't really like my skin to look that flawless. It's got redness, it's got blemishes, it's got moles and a few freckles and things like that. Freckles is what I want to call them, but actually they're just age spots, sun damage, all sorts of things like that. But I like that. I think it's good to embrace how your natural skin looks. And there's so many things you can do to kind of cover up what you want to cover up, but still let your skin shine through and just look fresh and glowing and summery. So that's what we're going to try and do today. I've got like the summery shoulders out and everything. Let's get straight into the routine that I've been doing recently. Um, I kind of like to have some sort of base on my skin, so whether I just put my moisturiser on, another layer of it, if it's been a while since I applied that, or there are a couple of other things that I really like to use. One of them is such an old, old favourite, it's this Estee Lauder uh, Day Wear. It's one of those products that looks like uh, just a normal moisturiser, but as you rub it in, it releases like a little tin, and I think this is so amazing. Um, for just making your skin look instantly better. It just kind of perks everything up. Also on days when I do have a little bit more to kind of correct, I really like this uh, Sicker Pear Recover from Dr. Jar. This one is kind of different. It's more of like a green sort of creamy formula thing. Um, it still releases a tint like the Estee Lauder one, but it's a little bit more corrective. So it does really balance out redness. It also has a bit more coverage to it. So it does even out your skin um, a little bit. What I want to use today and what I have been reaching for so, so much though is this Kiehl's Glow Formula Skin Hydrator. I've talked about this in quite a few videos recently, but I like it a lot. It's kind of like somewhere between a moisturizer, a primer, and a glowing highlighter, which is amazing. So it hydrates your skin, as well as giving it some kind of like, it's it's not color and it's not glow, it's in between, I can't really explain it. So I think having something like this on your skin first, it just kind of gives something for the other products to kind of stick to and adhere to. And it's not really adding any weight, which is the main reason that I'm not really wearing foundation at the moment. I just don't really feel like having that on my skin. This just feels like a moisturizer. It's just gonna give like a solid foundation um, or a base to everything else that I'm putting on top of it. Concealer's gonna play quite a bit of a part here. <laughs> so when I do do a no foundation makeup routine, I like to use a pot concealer. I'm not sure why, I just really like the way these apply. This one is from NARS, it's the Soft Matte Complete Concealer. Kind of just has a bit more to it. And it also doesn't need setting, it's definitely more of a powdery formula. I don't really wanna use powder today, I wanna keep things quite simple. So I find this just kind of sits there on its own and doesn't go anywhere which is always a plus. Uh, so the way I like to apply these is always with a clean uh, beauty sponge. I kind of just dip it in there and <laughs> put this all over my face. Uh, so I will start with under my eyes, which is uh, obviously the place that I need to conceal the most. I'll kind of start with my worst areas and then go from there. So I feel like once the bits that you're really concerned about are covered, the rest kind of just blends in and it doesn't look too bad and you can kind of leave a few blemishes and a bit of redness out. That's how I like to do it. Okay, so already I feel like I look 10 times better. Um, so you can see now the rest of my redness is kind of just around my nose and a little bit on my chin. It's sort of at the sides here. I don't know why I've started getting that. So I'm gonna do the same. And just as I'm going, I'm sort of like blending a really small amount in and then blending the edges too so that it doesn't look too much like I've just got patches of concealer on my face. The last place I kind of wanna cover is around my chin. I do have a few little scars left over from some breakouts there. And then I'll usually just do a little bit on my forehead. So kind of just in the center of my face. And then... <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. That can go. That does not need to stick around. Okay, so this is where the essential, essential part of this makeup comes in, bronzer. I've been just obsessed with this milk makeup matte bronzer in baked. Ever since I got it, I've used it every single day. I love this and I think it completely transforms the way your makeup looks. So 
I am quite liberal with this. It's a nice blendable formula so it doesn't look quite as strong as it does when you're applying it. But these are the kind of the areas that I put it on. Kind of just where I didn't put any concealer. So all the other areas of my face and down my neck as well. I think when you put bronzer on it kind of just covers a lot of stuff up as it is. When you warm up your skin a little bit, it sort of just disguises anything that you might have thought about covering up with foundation, especially uneven skin tones, stuff like that. Because there's not really any product where I'm putting this, there's no foundation underneath it. It sort of just blends in with your skin instead of the product underneath. And I think that makes it look way, way more natural for some reason. I literally love this thing so much and I depend on it a lot too. It's one of my holy grail products for sure. So I want to put a little bit of blush on. I'm actually going to use this little, it's kind of like a lip and cheek stain thing from Herbivore. I really love the color of this. It's a super kind of terracotta, rosy color. It's also super pigmented too, so you don't need a lot of this. If I'm going to be using cream bronzer, then I'm 90% of the time going to be using cream blush as well. And I just kind of blend it onto my cheeks like that and then take the same brush and soften it out like that. I do have a few tiny little freckles going on at the moment. Um, some of them aren't really strong enough to see unless you're this close up to me and some of them have kind of been covered up by the concealers. So I am going to go back in with my brow pencil. Maybe a slightly controversial thing to do. I'm not sure why. I have always loved freckles. I love the way they look. I've always wished that I had uh, darker ones. And there isn't a single thing that you can do to your makeup that will make your skin look more natural than adding in a few little marks and freckles and things like that. It just, it makes your skin look so much fresher and like you don't really have any products on it at all. Most of the freckles that I do have are kind of just around the sides of my face here and here just sort of on the high points of my cheekbones. So I just put a few little more back in there, maybe a few on my temple and my brow bone and just sort of in that like C shape around there. And then I just go around and sort of press that all over my fingers until it's kind of not really even there at all. It just gives a little bit of a less um, perfect finish to my skin and I really like the way that looks. So I'm just gonna run through my brows quickly with some of the Benefit Gimme Brow just to keep those in place where they should be. How cute is the packaging of this sweet, tiny little thing? And that's it, that's pretty much my base routine done. So concealer, bronzer, maybe a bit of blush and then any last finishing touches, keeping it super simple and easy. Um, and I really, really like this. So other than eyes and lips um, as well, which I'll go and do and finish in a second, I actually just really like this on its own. For every day when I'm not that bothered about what I'm wearing, I think I'd probably just curl my lashes and that'd be me done. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of lip balm as well. But I do wanna put a little bit more makeup on today. So I am going to use one of these Chanel names I can never pronounce properly, uh, Ombre Premiere. This one is in silver pink, which is actually easy to say. <laughs> it's this super gorgeous, like minky, taupey kind of color. And I think a little bit of this just washed out on the lids is so pretty. So I kind of just messily apply it with my finger there. And then I just blend it out with a brush. These feel so funny. They're kind of like moussey. Like I just want to stick my finger in there for some reason. <laughs> I'm going to do the same um, on a smaller brush and just take that underneath my eyes as well. I find if you use a smaller brush, you actually get a bit more pigment. So I'll take that underneath there. And then I'll also sometimes just kind of smudge a bit more into my lashes. Most important step, which I'm now addicted to. I never ever used to curl my lashes, but can't, can't not do it now. For mascara, I have been using my Glossier Lash Slick. I do have a brand new tube of the It Cosmetics Super Hero Mascara though, so I'm actually just gonna use a little bit of that on my top lashes. Oh, I forgot how volumizing this mascara is. This stuff is like the heavy duty, super thickening, really lash boosting mascara. So if you like thickened lashes to the point where they sometimes look a little bit clumpy, which personally I love, then this mascara is amazing for that. I've literally barely touched my lashes and it's done things, it's done a lot. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on and then I'm gonna go back in with the Glossier Mascara, just kind of comb that out a little bit. And then always this on my bottom lashes because I found that it does not smudge. Um, I tried this out in the first impressions video recently and you guys wanted to know how it sort of wore 
and I can confirm that it didn't smudge, which is amazing because most mascaras do smudge on me. It's not as easy to take off as I thought it would be though. It claims to kind of just come off with warm water like a tubing mascara. I have to use um, an eye makeup remover to get this off. I don't know if that's just my lashes, but it doesn't come off with warm water for me. If it does, I have to kind of really sit there and scrub it, which I don't want to do. But I still love it. It's still been probably my most used mascara at the moment. And then for my lips, I'm just gonna go back this herbivore uh, lip and cheek product that I used on my cheeks. It's such a pretty color. I love that so much. And that is it. That's my no foundation makeup routine for you guys. Um, basically my everyday makeup at the moment. If you never really go out without foundation on, um, definitely give this a go. I think you can do so much more with other products um, than just layering on a base of foundation because you're so used to it, which you may not even really need. Um, I think we should all embrace our natural skin no matter what it looks like. So everyone's skin is gorgeous as it is. Everyone is beautiful. That is all for me today. And yeah, I will see you all again in my next video.